exactly, and I don't want you to blush, what exactly was your relationship with your daughter Anna? Well, uh, a relationship is uh, a negotiation. Uh, uh, the two people involved in any relationship uh, know far more about it than the outside world who may comment on it. But even they uh, do not necessarily know what is going on within their relationship. But what I can tell you uh, with Anna, with regards to Anna, uh, she was a very special uh, situation for me. She was she the was, youngest child. She was the youngest, she was the least beautiful. And she was therefore uh, very insecure and very competitive with her sisters. Uh, she suffered from depression. She suffered from eating disorders. And as a result, she chose to uh, come into the world of my work. Uh, this was something uh, that we negotiated together. Uh, unspoken, perhaps, but still, uh, she came into my world. And once she came into my world, and started to follow my work. That was uh, something definite for her to hold on to uh, in a world that was very uh, uh, topsy-turvy for her. And so you might say that uh, she gave me permission uh, to uh, lead her uh, by her needs uh, and her fragility. But Sigmund Freud, since I am a behavior therapist, if she would have come to talk to me, I would have told her, you go to medical school. Even with all your rationalizations and talking about why you did it. Um, there was a flirtatious uh, kind of a relationship. I saw a picture of you walking in the Alps with Anna. And where was your wife? Uh, well, uh, these were two very different relationships. My relationship with my wife uh, was very uh, conventional. Uh, it was, uh, we had a uh, good, solid uh, sexual relationship that produced children, but it was not an inspiration for me. Uh, my work was my inspiration. Are you, are you saying that you don't even know if your wife ever had orgasms? Uh, uh, my wife was, uh, <laughs> did not seem to me uh, to be any more interested in uh, sexuality than I was uh, beyond producing children. However, my relationship with Anna was deeply sexual uh, in the sense that we together explored her own uh, libido and her fantasies in order that we could expunge them. Now, when you, uh, I'm a behavior therapist, and you would have thrown me out of your circle of um, admirers or even adherents because I would not agree with you. <laughs> I, uh, this is true. So, <laughs> now, uh, I, I don't encounter any uh, issues of transference, but what's fascinating, so since you believe in the transference of the patient with, the, with, the, uh, with you, mm -hmm. um, so was that also something that you worked on with Anna? Uh, yes, uh, transference and counter-transference was central to my work. Uh, and uh, with her and with my patients, uh, they would elicit uh, attraction in me, uh, in their transference, and I would uh, uh, experience that attraction with them. Uh, we, uh, we worked uh, very uh, brutally and very honestly with these things, but the brutality and the fact that we could call a spade a spade when there was sexual attraction between us allowed, uh, took away the potency of it, so it was never acted upon. So, Sigmund Freud, are you saying that you also were attracted to your women patients? I, I, I was attracted to them and I dreamt about them. Did you dream about them? Absolutely. Did you dream that you had sex with them? Absolutely. That was part That's of... That's a no-no in my book. But <laughs> I'm embarrassed, but I'm going to ask him. Sigmund Freud, so here you were attracted, you dreamt about them? Are you telling me that you afterwards, when you were alone, Masturbated with them in mind? Uh, I, well, uh, candidly, not the Ruth. Yes. Uh, of I course, did. candidly. I did. But I was not very good at it. <laughs> <laughs> you have to come to my office. I would like some, uh, some tips. I'll teach you. Uh, uh, yes, have you got any? Uh, I'd be very interested. <laughs> I, have, I have a serious question. Um, uh, most of uh, your belief was that women do have penis envy. Oh. 
and uh, that's not would you if you were now with me mm -hmm. talking to me would you still believe in Peter's envy? Yes, I, th I think it is alive and doing well. <laughs> uh, and the reason I say this is because uh, uh, we live in uh, in your time is modern with uh, new ideas and equality. Uh, but you know, civilization is only skin deep and is quickly removed as the Nazis proved so well. Uh, so you put people on an island and civilization will go out of the window very quickly. Uh, and be, uh, be, uh, behind that, the conscious civilized mind uh, is the reptilian mind, the brain, the basic instincts. And when a little girl sees a naked little boy for the first time, she still to this day says, I want one of those. Uh, because he's got something she hasn't got. Yeah, but she, but she also is being taught by behaviorists like me that she's the only one who can bear children. But I, I understand. Uh, oh, that's a very yeah. good point. So she now is. I want, now I talk about sex all day long. I uh, think about sex all day long. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what was that preoccupation of uh, you were talking about the oral and uh, the anal stage, mm. and especially what was that preoccupation that everything is uh, really built on that sex drive, on that libido? Uh, well, uh, for me, uh, it was a, it took a, a, a quite a long journey to reach that conclusion, uh, and uh, you know, I think uh, the. From our part of the world, there's a great deal of interest in anal doings uh, and such. Uh, but I, I felt that, uh, that man had uh, basic drives, and I tried to remove man from his civilized world and take him back to his place in the animal kingdom. And I thought, uh, yes, uh, animals, uh, what do they need to do? They need to eat, and they need to procreate, and, uh, and so on. That's how I... So, um, the Oedipus complex, uh, if you were alive today, uh, would you still hold to that theory that the boy wants to be his mother's lover, wants to kill his father? Uh, today, uh, with uh, quite a lot of hindsight now, uh, I realize that uh, this is not a cut and dry thing, uh, but that for me and the perhaps for many, uh, uh, this is true. Uh, but that may not be uh, so completely the rule as perhaps I first said. What about the Electra that the girl uh, that the girl is, uh, uh, is is in love with her father and, and would like the mother to disappear? Is uh, it all the same? Uh, I, I firmly all? believe this, Tim. <laughs> yes, I, I firmly believe this. Uh, I, I see it every day with young girls. Now I'm going to take you to task about something about the Jewishness. Uh, first of all, um, it's fascinating that you come from a Jewish background that your wife adhered to some Jewish rules. You didn't permit her to light candles? Is that true? Uh, yes, it is true. That's true. Uh, I hope if you come back to Earth, you're going to change your ways. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I feel that uh, at the time, my obsession with my work uh, uh, was like many people who have achieved a certain kind of greatness, uh, much uh, suffers around them, much falls by the wayside. Uh, you have a man who made all the electronics, uh, Mr. Jobs, uh, his, uh, he neglected his children, uh, his wife, everything, in order to fulfill his vision. Yeah. All right, not an excuse. No. The Jewishness is so fascinating with me because I'm very Jewish and not orthodox, but adhere to Jewish values. And in the Jewish tradition it says that a lesson taught with humor is a lesson retained. You did use humor. So you, you were really very Jewish. You, I would have to ask you, what was that denial? Was it only the issue about God and the supernatural? Or what was that denial of your Judaic soul? I think uh, perhaps there is some connection between that and my, my uh, failure to understand the soul of music. I, I think perhaps I, 
I think I was a very uh, tunnel vision man uh, who, who had his uh, desire to achieve greatness in a certain a specific way. And I think uh, much got neglected on the way. Is the, is the not liking the music because you were worried about the emotions that the music brings about? I, I could not give myself permission if I did not understand uh, the mechanism of my emotion from music. I would not allow. Interesting. But just before the end, mm. you seem to have liked the music, the classical music that came from that radio of yours. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, when you desire something, uh, I desired to understand music, uh, there is always the Hail Mary, as you say. <laughs> and uh, the Hail Mary path to the... Uh, to, and, and for me, uh, this wonderful uh, man who visited me, Mr. Lewis, C.S. Lewis, uh, uh, such a uh, diametrically opposed to my views, and yet somebody I felt such contact with, uh, almost as a son. I uh, I, he, he, the fact that he loved music, uh, uh, yes, I think, why, why can't I? I try yes. one more time. Uh -huh. Most interesting, and you did try. Now, in the Jewish tradition, you are not supposed to commit suicide. You can't be buried in a Jewish cemetery if you commit suicide. You didn't exactly commit suicide, but you had an agreement with the doctor. And Louis asked you if your wife knew about it. Did she? Uh, she did not know specifically that, uh, uh, that this was going to be the way. Uh, I think that I spoke generally in saying there will come a time when I cannot. I, I had a hole in my face. I had flies trying to land and lay eggs in me. And, uh, and I said to my doctor there, no more torment. No more torment. Yeah, but I did not say, oh, tomorrow, uh, my dear. So if we want to uh, leave uh, the Freudian legacy. First of all, from now on, whoever hears the word Freud is going to think of this actor. Am I right? <laughs> so for me, I'm thinking of the actor. There's another movie out there. I like this Freud better. Don't you quote me. <laughs> Don't you quote me. Because, <laughs> but, but um, would you, Freud, um, would you have written a different play about yourself? thinking of the audience of today, 2011 and 12. Mm -hmm. Yes, I think it's quite a different play. Uh, I think it would have been way too complicated and nuanced to be listened to. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I think you have to understand that in uh, my time, uh, uh, men showed uh, affection for each other in a way that was, as the Greeks, that it, it was a non-sexual. There were, there were ways of expressing love uh, and certain things that we did that did not were not tainted with sexuality. And I think that uh, my uh, association with my daughter uh, was a very profound exploration of a field that neither of us had been in before. This was an exploration, our therapy together. Nobody was there to guide us. Uh, and the fact that we touched upon her sexuality and tried to heal it, uh, it does not necessarily mean that I was, uh, what do you say, uh, diddling her. So, but you had one more question, which makes me blush. You were titillating her. So we don't know if she, how much she dreamt about you. We don't even know in my behavioral sex therapy modality. <laughs> I can't say it, I'm blushing. <laughs> if, she, if she didn't masturbate with you in mind. Uh, I think she probably did. <laughs> I think that's so seriously, uh, Well, and the reason that I say it so seriously is because when you have to dig down until there is nothing hidden, uh, what is the very worst that we think and feel? Uh, and what is the most taboo that we can feel? Uh, bring it out into the light. It is no longer a monster if we bring it into the light and we say, you want to masturbate thinking about your father. Uh, so let us talk about this. Let us get this out. Uh, but never let this uh, be taken beyond... Uh, where it should be, and act at the point. Good. So, Freud, 
um, do we know? <coughs> do we know the relationship of Anna with her mother? I don't see anything. Uh, it was not close. Not close. That's because of your fault. Uh, it. Uh, I think. Uh, Probably we within the family would not even be able to fully explain it. But I would say that uh, from an early age she was very fragile, argumentative. Uh, her beauty became her naughtiness. Uh, she did not get on with her siblings because she was uh, in competition with them. And she did not get on with her mother. She came towards me later uh, with her simple, uh, gentle uh, learning. Uh, she was just a very... Uh, uh, insecure soul who needed uh, guiding firmly. But, but, you, uh, yeah. but you, Freud, did what Jacob in the Bible did with Joseph. You favored her. You gave her a coat with many colors, which would imply that her siblings must become jealous of her. Did you ever think of that? Uh, I think I uh, uh, leveled the field. Yes, yes, because it was very unfair towards her at first, and then because she was so plain. Uh, and later in life, she said uh, she did not marry because her love for me was all she wanted. Now, I would not uh, advise her that, but that was how it was for her. Did she have a woman-to-woman -woman relationship? Some people think that. With Marie Bonaparte, I who think saved that. you? You think that? I think that. And you don't know? I don't know. I would have died for curiosity to know that. <laughs> uh, after our uh, therapy together, there were parts of honor that uh, uh, would not, I could not access. And did you have a relationship not permissible by law, by Jewish law, with your sister-in-law? Uh, no. No? That is my but only comment. Well, <laughs> do you remember? When he, Freud said, what he doesn't talk about is more revealing than yeah. what he talks yes. about. Yeah. Thank you so very much. Uh -huh. Now we let the audience ask you. <laughs>